Working from home is a topic that everyone's talking about at the moment, and there's heaps of articles out there on advice for best practices to work efficiently from home and maintain a healthy work-life balance. However, as a creative who's worked from home for several years now, doing my full-time job, which is running the Makers Muse YouTube channel, well, I have a few differing opinions on what might be presented in other areas of the internet for a creative type person working from home. And I want to share how I've managed to make it work in this video. So let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. If you've never seen me before, welcome. I usually talk about 3D design, 3D printing, projects, tips and tricks, and that kind of thing. But this video is all about how I work from home, work in the same place I live effectively and efficiently. And as I said, there's heaps of amazing advice out there on working from home. And I actually made a Twitter post and I'm gonna link in the description of that post. People had some really good advice of how they make it work. But I seem to be very different to a lot of other people. And I wanted to share my thoughts on working from home because you might be like me and the conventional wisdom might just not work for you. So let's start with number one, throw the nine to five out the window. So this is important and it's the biggest learning curve for working from home versus going to a physical location for a set number of time. When you work for a company, you go into a physical location, you're paid per hour. And the whole working ecosystem set up like this, you're paid hourly, you're there nine to five, five days a week, whatever, then you get there at the same time as everyone else and you head back at the same time as everyone else, which is why we have peak hour. But when you're working from home, you don't have a time-based economy anymore. You're actually functioning under a productivity-based economy. It doesn't really matter how long you take to do something, you just need to do the thing. And as a creative, for example, I might have to edit a video, or I might have to design something, or I might have to do my accounting, or I might have to answer emails. So when you remove that office environment and that, that framework of hourly rate, it comes down to how efficiently can you do these tasks? How productive can you be? Because if you can get the same amount done in an hour versus what you would normally do in five, well, that leaves you with four extra hours to do something else with. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it's a little bit challenging and admittedly a little bit jarring at first. Here's the thing. I am not an early riser. I never have been. I would struggle to get to school. I would be basically dead to the world till midday and it's just how I am. But consider this, what if I told you I woke up at 10 o'clock today, 10 a.m. Would you say I'm lazy? Uh, I had a magnificent sleep in? Well, what if I then told you I was up till 3 a.m. doing 3D design? Does that really sound like it's a lazy thing anymore? And my point is people have different rhythms and they are productive at different times. And when you work from home, if you're able to, and I have to stress this, not every industry is able to work out of the nine to five. If you're able to work when you're most productive, it's really, it doesn't make any sense to force yourself to work when your mind's elsewhere or you're half asleep or you're making mistakes. Whereas really, if you can get stuff done at a weird time and you're more productive, then why not take advantage of that now you're outside of that rigid infrastructure that is the nine to five? Because again, we're working on a productivity-based system, not a time-based system, and you wanna maximize your productivity so you have more time to do other things. So that takes us to number two. To be productive, you need to disable all notifications. This is so, so critical. I can't overstate it. The social media world we live in is designed to distract you. It's designed to take you down this rabbit hole of time wasting. And as someone who runs a YouTube channel, I'm always at risk of clicking a YouTube video, then it suggests another one, another one, another one. Before you know it, you've spent hours on YouTube and you've got nothing else done. So the first step is to make sure your phone doesn't go off at all unless it's something that is critical and that might be a family member calling or a boss calling or something like that. Make sure it is 
silent if you at all can get away with it. So email's a great example. So many people have their phone make a noise when an email comes in. Is that not the most distracting thing possible? When you're in the zone, an email bouncing in, it could just be like a spam email, completely irrelevant. That takes you out of that zone of productivity and it takes ages to get back in. And same with social media posts. Any interruption or alert completely ruins your ability to focus on a task and get it done quickly. So I can't overstate it, no notifications. And that takes us to number three. Working from home is a weird dynamic because you'll be working often around family members. And they have to understand that you're here now to do work. You're not just in the house to be talked to or told to do chores. And when I first worked from my parents' house before I moved out, um, my mum's lovely, but often she would come and chat or ask me to do things. And it had to be really clearly established that I'm working now, the door is closed, you might want a note saying do not disturb, something like that. You really need to clearly establish a boundary with your family members that you are working, you are not to be disturbed, and by not being disturbed you'll get the work done quicker, which actually benefits everyone because then you can spend more time with them when you've done what you needed to do. Number four is the ability to self-manage, and I do that with to-do lists. Now, I love to-do lists. This video is a to-do list. I smash through these books. Um, to-do lists work great for me because I can ch I can chunk out a task into parts and I can tick them off or, scri or just scribble them out. It's very satisfying when I've done them and I can set out what I need to do each day, each week, each month. They change all the time. I have hundreds of to-do lists that just constantly evolve, but it means stuff gets done and never, never sort of left questioning what I should do next. Now, you don't have to do to-do lists. There's lots of different methods people use. Some use like a Trello board. Some will use uh, like sticky sticky notes, some people will use a whiteboard, it doesn't matter, but make sure you have somewhere you can go to look at what you need to do. This is important because big tasks that aren't clearly defined or broken down into manageable chunks don't ever get done. So another example for me is making a video. I have to make a project, I have to film it, I have to edit it, and I need something called B-roll. So I often have a, a to-do list, a checklist of B-roll shots, like I want a shot of the front or the top or me doing something with this item that I'm showing on camera and then I'll do all that, I'll write it all down and then I'll take the shots and then I'll edit it in and I'm done. It's very efficient, it means you can manage your time better, make sure you write it down. And on the same note, you should reward yourself when you accomplish something. So if you get through a to-do list of projects out there, for example for me it might be publishing a video, you know, go go do something else nice. You know, maybe go watch a, sh a movie with your partner or go play some games or do something, whatever you, whatever you find enjoyable, relaxing, go do something else and then come back refreshed to take on the next task. Number five is grouping of tasks. So when you go through your list and you see what you need to do, you might find that some tasks naturally gravitate towards each other and make sense to do at the same time. So email is a fantastic example of a task that should be grouped. You shouldn't be doing emails all day, one at a time. You should sit down, go through emails, answer them, and uh, delete the ones that aren't required, go through, go through, and then you'll be far more efficient with your time by grouping those tasks. Another example would be my filming. Um, I'll often film multiple videos at once with a script and then I'll come back and I'll edit those videos. So it means I don't have to set the camera up every single time and I'll get like three videos out. It's a lot more efficient. It takes planning and sometimes I don't always get it right, but if you're able to group tasks together, you'll be far more efficient and productive with your time. And number six is multitasking. Now this goes in hand in hand with uh, grouping tasks, but let me stress, there is no such thing as multitasking. You can't do two things at once. It doesn't exist. Don't pretend and lie to yourself that you can do it. It doesn't work. What I mean is figuring out what tasks might have a waiting time after you do certain deliverables or certain things that then you can come back to. So a great example again for me would be a 3D design that I do. I will 3D model something, then I need to print it. Right now, downstairs, there is a model printing, and I'm using this time to film this video. This is an effect effective use of my time because the models can take hours to print, and you don't really want to be waiting around for them to print to do the next thing. So figure out what tasks you can do while other things are waiting. For example, sending out emails, then you can wait for everyone to get back to you and do something else, and then when you come back to your computer, everyone's had time to answer. Figuring out what actually works naturally and slots into each other is a really good way of maximizing your productivity and limiting the time where you're just 
waiting around for things because that sucks and it's really, really inefficient. The next tip is just to be as comfortable as possible in your work environment. You're working from home now. You don't have to wear a suit and a tie unless you are teleconferencing clients across the world. Wear what's comfortable, set your environment up so it's comfortable, you know, get a comfy chair, get some nice lighting, get yourself a nice tea. Often when I'm working, I'll have a Twitch stream running. So for example, when I'm 3D modeling, I can just sort of listen to this Twitch stream uh, like Kit Boga does uh, scam baiting. He's fantastic to have on while I'm working. Uh, and stuff like emails, I have some chill music on. It's really important to make your environment as inviting and as relaxing as possible so you get into that zone easier. You don't want to be forcing yourself to do uncomfortable things just because you think you should. Like, look, stand-up desks are great, but if you find yourself fidgeting and unable to work and concentrate, then are they really helping your productivity? I don't know. I've got one, I use it now and then, but usually I'm just sitting in this chair doing my work and then I just stand up to take regular breaks and I've made my environment as comfortable as possible to get as much work done as possible. However, this is something that I haven't really seen anyone talk about when it comes to productivity. Don't be too productive. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you're working from home, you might be overcome with this sort of feeling of having to prove yourself and prove I'm not slacking off, I'm working really hard. Um, the problem is, you need to maintain a sustainable burn when you're in this environment. And if you throw yourself out there and work your ass off trying to get deliverables done quicker than everyone else, your superiors, if you're working for a company, will be like, wow, they're really you know, working really hard. Let's throw more stuff at them. Um, and when you drop down in productivity, it's gonna be really like obvious. It looks like, it'll look like you're slacking off then. So I'm not saying slack off at all. I'm saying be sustainable and maintain the fact that, yeah, you're working from home. That doesn't mean your whole life has to be work now. It means you can balance your life and work to be as efficient as possible to actually get more out of your day to do relaxing things. And that's one of the first things I didn't even really, really understand when I started working for myself. I did burn out. I was trying to push myself too hard with too many videos, too much editing, and I didn't have a healthy work-life balance. And then when you start to realize, wait, I can just do this and then relax for a bit. I can read that book or I can go watch that movie without any guilt. Then that's really when you hit the sweet spot of working from home, being productive and actually living your life and enjoying it. Um, I can't overstress that enough. And I think that's a great segue into the work-life balance and things that I do to maintain it. Again, my approach is fairly chaotic. I don't keep a, a strict schedule. Uh, and my main editing rig is also where I play my games. It's where I make music and relax. I don't have the luxury of having two powerful computers. I don't think anyone really does. But one thing I can say everyone should do working from home is to maintain daily rituals. These are things that you look forward to every day that pull you out of that work mindset. They force you to be, you know, to do something else, to think differently and interact with people. Look, I'm an introvert. I'm not gonna pretend that I love being in crowds but I love going out every morning, having a coffee with my partner. And it might be down to the beach, it might just be down to a local cafe, it might even be in the house, you know, just relaxing and maybe watching something on TV or just around the, the table. It doesn't matter. That's a daily ritual that I hold on to. And it means we can talk about what we're doing and this and that and like our thoughts and concerns. And then you can get into work. Don't ever just eat in front of your work. Don't ever do that. That is such a trap and I've done it before. And that's when you start snacking, eating junk food, you know, drinking energy drinks, just working. And you really do put your own quality of life, of life at risk. So please, I implore you, please maintain some daily rituals of some kind. They don't have to be anything special, but do something with your family or friends or partner and uh, make sure that you maintain that human connection instead of just delving straight into your work and never seeing the light of day again. And also in the same vein of work-life balance is the environment you're working in. I've mentioned you wanna make it as comfortable as possible, but you'll see a lot of articles talking about work somewhere else than where you relax. I have the luxury of having like my bedroom somewhere else and no work happens in there, you know, it's just for sleeping, but I work here in my studio and I might, you know, also relax in here, but I have the luxury of having separate rooms in different parts of the house. But not, none of these articles seem to mention that not everyone has that, has that luxury. 
Uh, I know many people who have single room studio apartments where they will be working on their laptop in the same room they sleep. And I really do sympathize with you guys. It's very hard to turn off when your room where you work is also the room you relax and sleep in. And I say it's very difficult because the fact is when you have that work-life balance, they are still combined. Uh, when you work from home, they will merge. The two worlds collide and you will be in bed thinking about what you should be doing with your work. You know, you don't just turn off. You don't just bundy out, leave, and then you're done for the weekend. You will probably work on the weekend. But again, if you can make this work in your favor, where you're more productive and you actually work less, is that such a bad thing? You know, going to the beach on a weekday is way better than going to the beach on a weekend, is it not? So with the whole work-life balance thing, don't be too dissuaded with having an unusual approach to it. Just make sure you do maintain that balance. And again, if you have a small environment, try to maintain those rituals so you don't fall into the trap of just working and doing nothing else. So that's going to be the end of this video. It is very much my opinion and it's very much what's work, what works for me and it might not work for you. And that's okay. I'm going to link in the description, the Twitter handle, the Twitter post that I did where people had heaps of approaches to making working from home effective for them. Some people like to put on work attire. Some people like to maintain that rich, that's that strict nine to five regimen. Some people find it handy and that's fine, but I didn't really see anyone talking about this approach to working from home where it's almost chaotic, but it's almost beautifully chaotic in that it's actually finely tuned to when I'm most productive and when I want to relax. And it's so far worked really well for us. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them in the video description below. Um, I'd love to hear how you approach working from home or how you're finding it if you're just doing it for yourself. And if you did enjoy this video here on Makers Muse, I usually do 3D modeling tutorials, 3D printing tips and tricks, reviews, that sort of thing, projects. So if that sounds interesting to you, then maybe consider subscribing. Otherwise, it's totally fine. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.